Hello, I'm Libby Wentz, Director of the Knowledge Exchange for Resilience, and I'm excited to share with you the proceedings of our convening called Designing Resilience Dividends, Energy and Housing Futures, an event sponsored by ASU, SRP, and APS. We gathered virtually and in person at ASU's Decision Theater to explore the challenges facing Maricopa County to balance the needs of a rapidly growing population, expanding economy, and rising temperatures, which cumulatively are putting stress on our energy and housing sectors. We had three really different and interesting outcomes. In the end, we connected people and their ideas from different sectors. We brought data and models to the conversation to build a shared understanding of the problem of housing and energy. And we gained commitments from the different groups to implement changes for the future. We didn't, and in fact, we couldn't do this work on our own. That's why in addition to our partners in the utility sector, we were excited to include representatives from the residential building sector, city governments and nonprofits, and financial institutions such as insurance and mortgage brokers, as, as well as researchers at ASU. Here's what some of the leaders in these sectors shared with us. We've got to start thinking about how we're going to be continuously adaptive, continuously resilient, how we're going to build in broader logics to all the things that we're working on, how we're going to take a solution that we have for uh, global warming or local warming or some sort of local thing that is also going to produce other kinds of outcomes for us, what we call dividends. What we really need to do is we need to change our design logic. The design logic now needs to assume that continuous innovation related to resilience will be required for anything that we confront. So the only way we can do this is to bring everybody together. The only way that we can make these things happen is to break down the walls of the university, which we're doing, break down the walls of your organizations, think through everything from, you know, how we do mortgages, how we do planning, how we do city planning, how we do insurance, how we do all these things and find some way to come together because the old model is not going to work and we need new models, new designs, new outcomes and new resilience dividends. Dr. Crow hit the nail on the head. To build a thriving and resilient economy of the future, we're going to have to look ahead now. Uh, we need to innovate continuously and we need to adapt to be able to be prepared and to be successful. But you can't really effectively plan for the future without addressing head on two of the critical issues that are facing our regions, climate change and heat. We need to think, to plan, and we need to act now to anticipate the increasing temperatures of the future and the ongoing stresses that they're going to pose to our communities and provide, as Dr. Crow calls them, additional dividends such as heat mitigation and greater energy efficiency while we minimize the impact to our customers' energy bills. To look to the future, we have to understand the past. We live in a desert environment that's driven innovation for centuries. When you think about the Hohokam building irrigation canals to deliver water almost 1,400 years ago, to building a nuclear power plant in the desert cooled by municipal wastewater just 30 years ago, now we need to think even more broadly about resilience. It's not just about energy and water, but changes in our social environment. It's how we work. It's how we learn. It's how we play. At APS, we look forward to partnering with the Knowledge Exchange for Resilience and with partnering with all of you on this important conversation. In Phoenix, we understand that we are facing the impacts of a warming climate and that we have to invest in adaptation and resilience to be able to move forward as a successful community. We know we also still have to fight to reduce the impacts of climate change. I appreciate the linkage of housing resilience and heat together. It's one that has been important to us in the city of Phoenix. We're hoping to be solution oriented and try things that have not been tried before. We know that Phoenix exists because we have risen from the ashes before. We have to innovate, we have to think about heat, but we can lead the way in coming up with global solutions in partnership with great institutions such as ASU. It's a huge challenge, but there's cause for optimism. We've developed an approach to tackling big challenges, and we call it Share, Discover, Solve. The share part involves listening to a variety of perspectives from different stakeholders. For the Discover part, we curate data and build models to inform stakeholders and ourselves. When we solve, we bring together the experience of the stakeholders and the insight gained from exploring the data and put it together into a design logic 
to reveal innovative solution spaces. For this event, focusing on energy and housing, we developed a data model with our colleagues at the Decision Theater. Using data from SRP, local municipalities, NASA, and the U.S. Census, we looked at a number of factors that influence energy use during a recent Phoenix summer. We discovered something interesting. Conventional wisdom suggests that vegetation, which of course leads to cooler temperatures, should lead to lower energy use. However, we found that that wasn't the case everywhere we looked. When looking at only at higher income neighborhoods, higher amounts of vegetation is associated with higher energy use and therefore not an effective energy reduction strategy. However, in lower income neighborhoods, increasing vegetation does lead to reduced energy consumption. This tells us that one strategy, like increasing vegetation, will not lead to the same outcomes across all neighborhoods. After sharing different perspectives and spending some time in discovery with the data model, we met in small groups to explore potential solutions. These discussions sparked several ideas, but it also became clear that enacting these solutions is complex and requires the continuous engagement of these and many more actors. Our role at the Knowledge Exchange for Resilience is to keep the conversation going, to continue to use data and models for discovering gaps and vulnerabilities, and to encourage forward momentum for creating sustainable solutions. Thank you for engaging with us, and we look forward to partnering with you in the future.